Hey everyone, today I'm giving you one small and simple tip or trick for every killer. This is more aimed at newer players, but hey, maybe more experienced people will enjoy this too. Let's get into it. Okay, so first up, Trapper. Although placing traps in sneaky places and areas such as high grass is effective, a good alternative is to place them around sharp corners and at the tops of staircases or hills, where the survivors won't be able to see them, and during a chase will likely be looking behind themselves, and so step right into them. This also works well as survivors will typically assume that you trapped areas such as windows instead. For Wraith, an easy strategy to help you catch survivors on loops is to use your invisibility to your advantage. Although you can't attack whilst invisible, you can still block windows and pallets, forcing the survivors to go another way, and often giving you a free hit. If you struggle with guiding Hillbilly's chainsaw, an effective way to simply ignore obstacles is to go up to a high area when you begin your sprint, such as a building or a hill. Due to the high speed, you can fly on top of objects and sprint in a straight line, rather than having to maneuver through them. A great nurse add-on that is surprisingly unknown to quite a few is the played flannel, which is great for people like me who aren't so great with nurse, as it identifies the location of where your blink will land with a helpful marker whilst in the trial. This can make it easier when learning and practicing her power. For the shape when charging your evil within, make sure to 99 the bar before you reach the tier 3 stage as you need to make the most of your ability to insta down. Only activate your tier 3 by filling up the bar once you're in very close proximity to a survivor to guarantee a first down. As Hag, when placing your traps in the middle of pallets, you get the best value out of them when they are triggered by survivors. This is because even if the pallet is dropped, you are still able to teleport to the trap, allowing you to either teleport on top of the pallet, or alternatively it can cause the survivor to panic and run right into you. With Doctor when trying to stop a survivor from vaulting a window or pallet, make sure to use your shock a good few meters before they reach what they intend to vault, otherwise the shock wave will not kick in in time to stop the vaulting prompt. The electricity needs time to go across the floor and connect with the survivor, so do it earlier than you think you need to. My tip for Huntress is to take every shot you can get, no matter the distance or difficulty. No, actually, in my opinion, you should not go for these crazy shots, unless it's for fun. Save your hatchets and aim for shots you can actually hit. Take your time and don't miss. That's the tip. Sounds a little obvious, I know, but because you're limited in number, it's important to make them count. For Bubba, you should always try and get all of the survivors inside of the basement, and then you should camp the structure about... Okay, no, but seriously, a great trick on Bubba is to begin revving your chainsaw, and if you want to, start swinging it as you're approaching a survivor. You can do this whilst in a loop, and once the line of sight is broken, backpedal and catch them off guard. This can be done around most loops, as your red light will be hidden when moving backwards. With Freddy, it's best to use his snares on loops, but the way you place them is important. Placing them right before or in front of a pallet isn't very effective, as the survivor will often reach the pallet in time regardless. A better way to place them is on the longer part of the loop, where they'll usually gain the most distance otherwise. For Pig, an interesting way to use your ambush attack is to scare survivors off of loops. If a survivor is staying on a loop and you're struggling to catch them, simply crouch where they can't see you, 99 your ambush attack before standing back up and chasing them to the next area. The roar they hear from your ambush will often cause them to simply leave, rather than guess the direction you're coming from, as they assume you will ambush them. When using Clown, throwing your bottles on high structures such as buildings or trees will make the gas cloud your bottle creates spread in a much wider radius and therefore reveal and slow more survivors than usual. This can be especially good on strong but also wide loops. An alternative method to tracking on Spirit if you find tracking with sound hard is to utilize the add-on Father's Glasses in combination with the perk Bloodhound. Father's Glasses will allow you to see blood trails whilst you phase which will be very bright and clear and easy to follow due to Bloodhound, which makes them this way. A slightly odd Legion strategy I like to use is to hit a survivor whilst in Feral Frenzy, and pretend I'm running off to hit another elsewhere. Much of the time this will cause the survivor to begin mending straight away. To catch them off guard once you've left, you can quickly return and down them unexpectedly. In order to get the best efficiency from your Vile Purge as Plague, it's best to get as close as possible to the survivor you're chasing, so that even if they strafe, the vomit will collide with them regardless. This will let you effectively insta-down them if done correctly. My tip for Ghostface is simply patience. Sometimes pushing isn't always the best idea if a survivor knows your general direction. If a survivor is concerned you're drawing in close, they can easily panic and put themselves in the line of sight of exposure, so find a strong angle and wait for them to cause their own downfall. With the Demogorgon, the Shred Attack can be used for catching survivors out on long loops, but it can also be great as a means for map traversal. If you go up onto a high area of any map, as long as this area is elevated and there's not too much obstructing it, 
you can charge up your shred and fly quickly off the edge, allowing you to make a ton more ground, and also easily get around a lot of objects. An easy trick for Oni when utilizing your power is to run one way on a loop where the survivor's vision is blocked, and then hug the wall and strafe the other way. Running directly into the wall doesn't end the power, and so you can slide across, and often the survivor will run right into you. When playing Deathslinger, a great perk to run is Unrelenting, which allows you to recover from missed attacks 30% quicker than usual. This perk can be used when hitting shots from a long range, and ones that you aren't going to be able to fully reel the survivor in from. Once the reel bar reaches 99%, once you've hit someone, simply lunge forward to break the animation before you're stunned. This can be done without unrelenting, but this helps out a ton for catching up, and not having to endure that long stun animation if the chain breaks. Using aura perks on the Executioner can make his power both easier to learn but also survivor pathing easier to track. Perks such as I'm All Is and Nurse's Cooling are great perks for easy hits through walls. When using Blight's power, it's very easy to go overboard with the bounces. So my tip is to think before you bounce. Sometimes it's better to simply chase and use a basic attack, and often your power can throw you further off course and make you lose the chase completely. So, I repeat, think before you bounce. With the twins, if faced with a particularly difficult loop, you can use Charlotte to block either a window or a pallet to force the survivor away from the strong loop, or stay within it and make it far easier to hit them. Alright, and that's all of them. I do hope you enjoyed, and please drop your own favourite tips down below. Thanks, and... Goodbye. An additional thank you to LHPL3, as well as my other members for supporting the channel.